This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Hey y'all, how you been? It's been a minute. Hi, how are ya? Uh, welcome to another draw with me, Procreate Edition. Before we get into all the drawing stuff, I did want to go over my specs, just so we can get that out of the way. Um, I use a 2019 11-inch iPad Pro, uh, and then I use the program Procreate for drawing. I'm also using a second-gen Apple Pencil. And then as far as my favorite brushes in Procreate go, I use a couple different ones. For sketching and line art, I really like the Technical Pencil Brush, and then a modded uh, Tinderbox brush. I will have the mods uh, in the description box below. And then for coloring, I like to use the dry ink brush for my flats. And then I use the Max U or Max Eulogy watercolor and retro packs to add texture and stuff. Um, the Max U brushes, I'll have the link to those down below, but the other three brushes are Procreate standards. So you already got them. And that's that. So let's get into the drawing, shall we? So today we're going to be working on this redraw that I made of myself as a Hateno villager. These are also my canvas specs if you want to pause and take a screenshot. I always work at 300 dpi because I never know if I'm going to want to turn something into a print. And then I also tend to work kind of small, I don't know, I usually tend to work around like 2,000, like 1,500 to 2,000 pixels, and depend, I, it all depends. Um, but then I also always work in RGB, just because I think that the CMYK colors on Procreate always come out a bit weird, and so if I need to turn something into CMYK, I'll just do that in Photoshop after the fact. Um, I always sketch in red. I don't know why, I think it's because I used to sketch with the red Colorace Prismacolor pencils, like in my sketchbook. Um, so I always sketch in red. Uh, and then I like to do my line art in black with the technical pencil. Um, like I said, I use either the technical pencil or a modified tinderbox brush. I've been really on my technical pencil kick lately. So um, this is me working on that. And you'll see that it's just a lot of trial and error. I draw lines and erase them immediately, constantly. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch all like six minutes of this, but I had a really hard time with the bangs. The one thing that sometimes frustrates me about doing my line art is that I love how like fluid and loose and fun my sketches usually come across and I follow them very closely when I do my line art, but sometimes I get a little too wrapped up in like the neatness of it and it takes away like the fun and the freedom. So I struggled with the bangs for so long, so long, and it, it ended up being fruitless because I, I end up just erasing the whole thing because I realized that I don't like the line weight of the line art. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna erase all this and start over because sometimes that's, uh, that's what you gotta do. Man, I had a really hard time. <laughs> it's funny to watch back. I cut out like three minutes of this. Yeah, this was the point when I was like, you know what? I didn't like the line weight. So I made my 
brush just a wee bit thicker to better match up with the thickness of the brush that I used when I made the line art. Um, and I liked it way more. I also struggle a lot with this uh, right, or I guess my left. It's the character's left, it's my right. Um, or your right, the viewer's right. <laughs> I struggled a lot with that eye, but we'll come back to it later. Um, but yeah, now we just, I, God, I do love watching. <laughs> it is incredibly satisfying to watch someone do line art. And look how, look how easy the bangs came the second time around. We'd love to see it. So you'll notice that um, I don't always do line art for like everything in a drawing because for instance, the embroidery on the apron, I don't really want line art around that because I don't want it to be too defined. I want it to feel like more a detail of the apron as opposed to like a separate element. Um, it's kind of, it, it depends on the piece. It depends on the particular thing that I'm doing line art for, um, but I just kind of trust my gut on like what gets line art, what doesn't, what gets a shadow drawn in quote unquote ink, and then what's going to get a shadow when I do my colors. Um, this is just something that I've learned and developed over drawing with this particular style for the past couple months. Um, and it's just something you kind of get a feel for. Like you'll notice um, that I completely skip line art for the grass underneath because I know that I um, don't really want that kind of definition on it because I want it to feel softer and lighter and I want the character to stand out from the grass she's standing on. So sometimes a lot, a lot of this is just playing it by ear. You know what I mean? So this is the trouble that I was having with uh, the eye that I was talking about. I really liked how the two pupils like 
uh, up, we're looking up into the right in the sketch. I like how it looked in the sketch. I did not like how it looked in the line art um, because the sizing was weird and it just wasn't translating well. And so I ended up changing it where both of the pupils were like towards the middle. And so she looks more like she's just looking like straight up above her. I actually had someone uh, comment on Twitter and say that she looks like <laughs> they can imagine her looking up at the like Hateno ancient tech lab and that made me really happy so that's the fiction that I'm going with. <laughs> This bouquet of flowers was also very much like experimental. I am, I'm still deciding how I like to draw slash paint whatever foliage. I never quite know what I like. <laughs> I, I, I never know kind of what direction I want to go, but I was like, for this one, I was like, I don't want every leaf to be defined. I knew that I wanted to do a lot of the definition inside of the like bouquet i guess with the painting so i was like i will draw a rough outline kind of of the shape of like the foliage and i will draw the flowery details and i'll draw like a couple leaves on the inside um but like a lot of the depth and kind of three-dimensionalness of it comes forward or like layering of it comes forward in the painting. I'm actually really happy with how I colored these, um, which makes me glad because again, painting foliage is one of those things that I'm I, I'm still working on. So I was really happy with how this turned out. You, you'll see in a bit. So the line art's all done. Um, and now what I like to do is that I will hide my sketch layer. I never delete my sketch layer. I always keep it on hand, um, especially since I have details on it that I'm gonna be adding later. And I will lock the transparency on my line art layer or layers. And then I fill it in with like a nice bright red color. And then I set those layers to multiply because I like the way that it looks with the color underneath not particularly sure why because i will go back and change the color of some of my line art later but um this is what i've been doing lately and i really i really like it so that's that's what i'm doing <laughs> and now we're actually going to go in and do my flats which i love doing because it feels like i'm just coloring in a coloring book but before we get into coloring land i want to say thank you so much to squarespace for sponsoring this video i know Y'all know how great Squarespace is, but I'm gonna remind you anyway. Um, I've been using Squarespace to host my own website for the past couple years, actually, uh, and I've loved using them. I host my online store on there as well, and they make it really, really easy. They have loads of powerful e-commerce tools that make it easy to edit inventory, edit products, make your product pages look lovely and wonderful and beautiful. Actually recording this footage made me realize that I haven't updated my website in a while. So after I filmed this, I went in and like edited my fonts, fixed up some of my colors and things. Um, and it was very easy. They have loads of beautiful templates to choose from. So whatever kind of website you wanna make, they gotcha. Uh, they also have great technical support 24 seven. So if you need help, they got you. They've got automatic image scaling, and so you never have to, like, worry about your images looking weird and stuff, which is very important for me as an art person. And, um, they're grand. I love using them. And if you yourself have been looking to make a website or an online shop or a portfolio or anything of the sort, you can go to squarespace.com slash Cheyenne Barton for 10% uh, off your first purchase. So, uh, thank you, Squarespace. Y'all are swell. And now we get to do flats my favorite part because my line art is like so neat and tidy and so doing my flats literally just feels like coloring in a coloring book so I just kind of get a zone out um 
and like pick colors and color in the lines. It's, it's very soothing. I like using the dry ink brush because it's not a perfectly flat brush. It has like some kind of textural, textural variation to it. Um, and I really, really like the way it looks. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to leave you with some lovely coloring in footage. I also want to say that I do all of my colors on separate layers, or I guess like all of my different components on separate layers. So like the overdress is one layer, the undershirt is another, the hair is one layer, the skin is another layer, um, just because it makes uh, painting over them later way easier and way less of a hassle because then I can either do like alpha lock or I can use clipping masks. Um, and I, if that's not something that you already do in your own art, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, but of course it's, it's your process. I don't know what your process is. Maybe you're like a proper digital painter who doesn't just like color in the lines. So <laughs> don't listen to me if you don't want to. Um, but this has made my particular style of coloring way easier. Also, I love this blue on this dress. It's so pretty. So even though this apron is white or like white 
adjacent. Um, I want to make sure to color it in because I don't know what color my background is going to be. I knew at this point I, I, I wanted to have a colored background, um, so I just need to go in and make sure that the apron was filled in. I did like, it's like a hop, it's like a little nudge away from like pure white to make it slightly less like, I don't know, it just makes it blend in a little bit better um, to the rest of the drawing. Sometimes I like to color over the lines and then erase on the outside. I don't know why I do that. I think it's because I, it's fun. I, it's fun. I know that it's unnecessary and like time consuming, but I think it's fun. So I, I'm allowed to do what I want. now it's the foliage bit so this was actually this was a bit of a oh hi hi mr bus hello um this was actually a really fun kind of experiment for me again because i'm trying to figure out how i like to paint foliage um so i used um the gouache a gouache brush from that um max pack that i mentioned at the beginning of the video and i started with the i was just basically thinking like Kind of like watercolors very not gouache of me but i was like i'm gonna draw everything with the lightest value and then i'm gonna go in and add slightly darker values and then go in and add even darker values just because like contrast is key my friends and so i wanted to make sure that the bright stayed bright and that the dark parts of the bouquet which kind of um gives you the idea of like how thick it is and just how many flowers and like how many stems she's holding um, I just wanted to make sure that they were contrasted enough because, um, I feel like that's one of the weaknesses in my art is that I don't lean into contrast enough. And so that's something that I've been trying to keep in mind in order to add a little bit more depth. So yeah, for the bouquet, I basically just used, um, that gouache brush and then the technical pencil brush. I love the technical pencil brush. I think it's my all time favorite brush. I use it for coloring. I use it for line art. I use it for sketching. Um, it's just incredibly versatile and super fun for me to use. I know a lot of people are very loyal to the 6B pencil brush in, um, in Procreate, but I like how round the tentacle pencil brush is. Um, that's why it's my favorite, but I'm really happy with how this little bouquet turned out. I was actually very, I was very surprised. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to, um, like it as much as I did, which was a very, like, I don't know, it was a very, like, proud artist moment. So, um, something that I usually do, uh, towards like the end of coloring with my flats and stuff is I'll mess around with the hue slider to see if I want to change my mind. 
I didn't change my mind on this. I think like I changed the hue by 1% to the left, but um, sometimes this just gives me an idea of the wide range of possibilities. Also, at this point, I was um, losing daylight. So I had to kind of, uh, I had to stop at this point, but um, we'll, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Hello again. Good morning. <laughs> um, I am, I'm sad to say actually that I colored in the dress. Um, like I added my little watercolor textures to the dress uh, and I had finished coloring it before I realized I wasn't recording. So I'm sorry about that. But now is my very refined, super precise um, texturing process. Wow, there are so many cars out today. Um, and by that, I mean it's not refined and precise at all. I basically just take the watercolor flow round brush from the uh, Max Pack watercolor pack, and I essentially just do splotches of color on all my different areas. And so I will usually pay a little bit of mind to shading and so I'm thinking about like how I went a little bit darker underneath the apron because there's obviously a shadow there um, and how I have a little bit of a deeper yellow underneath the bouquet but I will usually take values that are like or not values I will take shades that are a little bit darker than the like base color and then a little bit lighter um, and I kind of just draw Sorry, there are so many trucks outside. I, oh my gosh. Um, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear that. Um, but I'll just kind of go in and just do splotches of color. It's, it is not precise. It's very much trial and error. Um, sometimes I will do, I will usually do like an alpha lock layer because the way that the watercolor brush interacts with the colors underneath is what I'm after. I don't like them to just like sit on top. So I'll usually just alpha lock and color it in that way. Um, and then, oh, I really like how I colored in the apron. I used like a really soft pale pink and a soft pale yellow, um, just to give it a little bit more dimension, just not let, let it be like not using grays for my shadows. Um, and you, you can see here on the dress how I go in with the watercolor brush and then I use the technical pencil brush to kind of add just like a little bit of hatching. Um, you can see how some of the blues, how some of like the watercolor spl splotches on the dress are more of like a green blue rather than like the cornflower blue of the base dress. So I kind of just go, I kind of just go a little buck wild and just follow my heart. Um, and then for how, however, for the embroidery, I did do it on a clipping mask because I wanted to be able to like erase the details of the embroidery without having to worry about erasing the stuff underneath it because I had already done all that pretty shading. Um, so clipping masks are incredibly useful. And if you don't know what a clipping mask is, um, it essentially, it's like adding a layer on top of something, but confining that layer to the colored space underneath it. So putting a clipping mask on top of the apron means that um, the colors that I draw on that clipping mask will not go outside of the apron, essentially. Um, and it's very handy to like draw different things, having the flexibility of different layers while still having the neatness of using say like alpha lock or something. Um, and now I'm going in and doing a little bit of recoloring on my line art. Uh, I still have everything on a multiply layer, but I usually like to go in and darken um, like the eyes. I lightened the apron just because I knew that the red was a little too harsh. And so I made it more of a light blue to indicate the light breeziness of the apron. Um, and I darkened up my the hair details a little bit just to, again, offer a little bit more contrast. Um, I don't think I do this until later, but I also go in and um, lighten up like the sleeves a little bit and I change the color of the line art for the bouquet. I think I just changed it to like a bluish green. Um, and uh, oh yeah, here I was like, do I want to do eye shine? I don't know if I want to do eye shine. I ended up getting rid of the eye shine, but I, we're, we're trying stuff out. Um, 
Oh yeah, now I'm doing blushies. For blush, I just use, again, that watercolor flow round brush. Um, I alpha lock my skin layer and I just go in and paint on the cheeks and on the nose and on the ears and on the hands. So it's, um, it's a good time. My process for drawing for coloring hair is um kind of the same where I like take just like different shades uh, with the watercolor brush and just kind of slap it on but I stay I follow the motion of the hair and I follow kind of the confines of the lines um, so it's sort of more like locks of hair and again I just use a combination of that watercolor brush and um, the technical pencil uh, on brown hair, I usually like to do highlights and kind of like a golden color, um, just because I think it looks really pretty. Um, this is definitely more kind of golden brown than my hair is. My hair is definitely more of just like a brown. But um, you know what? It it uh, it's my drawing. I can I can render myself how I like. Um, and then of course, like as you know, um, I should have maybe made the back kind of section of hair just kind of like in general one like i should have made the flats like one shade darker than the front to offer a little bit more depth but say lovey and um yeah i'll go in and add little hatch lines make like the darkest parts of the hair darker make the brighter parts of the hair brighter um i'm not really thinking of like one particular light source I'm just kind of following my heart you know what i mean Some sometimes I, I'll learn lighting one day. Today's not that day. Now, for the grass, like I said, I didn't do line art on this because I knew I wanted it to be more like painterly and fun. Um, so I went in with, again, that watercolor brush, went in with one green, um, added another green over it, just added a bunch of different greens kind of on top of each other in a very splotchy manner, as I like to do. Um, and of course, you know, I added my little star and my sparkles because you can't have a finished piece without sparkles. Am I right? Uh, and then I added the grass details on a layer above it. I think I set the layer to like linear burn or something. Um, sometimes I'll mess around with layer settings just to see what happens. Cause sometimes it adds like a fun, cool effect. Um, you know, where the, uh, the strokes of grass kind of maybe change a little bit with the variation of the greens underneath them. Um, so what did I land on? Yep, uh, no, uh, color burn, linear burn. I went with linear burn, okay. <laughs> I like color burn and linear burn. So um, yeah, I just went in and did my little hatchy grass things, again, with a bunch of different shades of green um, to add that good variation and that good sense of fun and looseness and brightness.
So here I'm going in with that like lighter color where I'm lightening up the sleeves a little bit. I'm adding little like those little details to the nose. Um, I essentially just like zoom out a lot and um, I like zoom in and out a lot and figure out like where I want to add stuff like what needs a little more pizzazz, which is why I ended up adding like little white flowers onto the grass and stuff. Um, and basically at this point in the drawing, I'm just zooming in and out a bunch and thinking like what needs just a little bit of zhuzhing? What's going to add kind of like a little final, little final something to the drawing? a final step, almost final step, I usually always add a noise layer. And the way that I do this is I pick like a mid value gray, I fill a new layer, and then I go to the noise tool and I'll usually bump it up to around like, I don't know, what do I have there? Like 14%. Um, and then I will set the, I usually set it to either overlay or soft light. I've been kind of keen on soft light and then I'll take the opacity down to like 50%. And I just, it just adds a little je ne sais quoi. I don't know what it is. I just love doing it. Um, and I also add a little signature sometimes. And uh, that is the whole kit and caboodle. I am so happy with how this piece turned out. Um, it is a redraw of a piece that I actually did back in December. It's of me as a Hateno villager. I can put the two up side by side right here. Um, as you can see, I've gotten a lot better in the last six months. It's very exciting. <laughs> it's I love doing redraws because it's just such um, it's such an easy way to see your growth, um, and it also means that you maybe don't have to like be creative and think of things. You can just fall back on old ideas and render them in new ways. That's the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and uh, I hope you have a great one. Stay frosty out there. Uh, I will see ya when I see ya. Bye.